Hello, I'm Nancy Douglas from Willow Spring Perennial Antiques, which is in upstate New York. And today I brought a selection of weather vanes. Um, I've specialized in weather vanes for the last several years, and they're such delightful sculptural objects to have in your home. I've just really fallen in love with them. One of the really great things about weather vanes is that regardless of where you put them in your home, they're going to put a wonderful silhouette on the wall, and I think that's a really wonderful way to look at them. Uh, there's just so many forms available today on the market, but I prefer some of the old ones by some of the really great weather vane makers. This is one. These are these are lovely. These. And this is a really interesting called the Leaping Stag Weather Vane. And this one is definitely by Fisk also. Um, such wonderful form on this particular vein. Uh, the ears are hand applied. The antlers are also hand applied. And they're very elegant. There's little tiny marks around the ear detailing that. Uh, this vein was done in a couple of forms. There is another one on the market that was done by Harris and Fisk that has um, a wonderful foliage with it. Yeah, but this pull is, it off? Yes, Thanks. pull it right Thanks. off. Let's see. And it's all... also a full body one. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very, very lovely. And but, a lovely little eye on yeah. it as well. The finish is quite worn on this one. This one has obviously but, been on a building yeah. uh, for many, many years. Yep. And uh, a little of the gold sizing. You can see how beautiful it is underneath where it wasn't exposed to the weather. Right. I often look at the, the wear on this cylinder on the inside to see if it's thicker on one side of this, this piping than the other because it usually leans. Leans a certain and way. One was more, and it shows that it, it rotated a few times. You know, actually, this, this does have that, that, uh, that change in, uh, in size and thickness because it, so it's, it was on a barn. That is a wonderful surface, and it's, I, I like it because it has this very simple, clean line. It has you, a clean line, a you, wonderful you, surface to it, and you, as I said, I have it up on a large high boy at home, right. and in the evening, under the evening light, it will cast its shadow around the room, and <laughs> I always love coming down and seeing it that way. It's really nice. And there's another sweet little one that I just recently got. Yeah, okay is this particular one here. I love it for its size. It's really a doe weather vane. I call it my little reindeer though because uh -huh. it just reminds me of a reindeer. Uh, beautiful, beautiful antlers on this one. I was very taken by the ears because the antlers have wonderful little uh, uh, hair Roots. marks underneath it which is quite un quite different. And now it eye. has drilled eyes yep. and I'm attributing this particular vein to Washburn because he was one of the few weather vane makers that did drilled eyes yep. with his weather vanes. He also made very unusual forms. He did beavers and squirrels mm -hmm. and many unusual forms in weather vanes. He did the squirrel with a nut that yes. is so, it's sold a, for record price. It's unusual to have this one in a nice small size mm -hmm. and it's just a charming little weather vane and it goes so nicely with the leaping stag. I think they make a beautiful set together. This, this this is really really nice. I really not. I like the I like the fact that the ears are actually uh, also incised. You know, yes. the inside of the ears, inside almost like a little, leaf. Little little leaf design almost <laughs> on them. Yeah, it's like and a few little muscles that you can see within the vein itself. Very nice, really nice. Did you and find as I said, this? Veins are so sculptural. They're so well, they, they're, they're such <clears throat> a wonderful folk art. This looks great. See like how that? it's making the shadow yeah. in the background. Yeah, the shadow is wonderful. Yeah, but it's. I love them against the wall, on, on the wall, and they're so easy to mount, right? Just yes, a few nails, yes, really. and it'll make a great holiday addition to put, uh, I'm going to put a little wreath and a bow on him for the holiday season. Yes, you going to paint his red, his yes. his red? No, don't do that. No. Okay. It'll just sit back down yeah. there. We'll call him Rudolph. Well, thank you, Lee, for looking at my veins. I hope hey. you enjoyed them, too, as much as I do. Weather veins are wonderful to collect. They're wonderful pieces of folk art. There's so many available on the market today. Try to go to reputable dealers because there are a few reproductions today, but the original ones have such great form and beautiful finishes on them. They're quite easy to, to find. And as I said, they come in just so many forms today. Thank you for looking, Lee. Thanks. Thanks for bringing them, Nancy. These weather vanes will be found on the Ruby Lane site this uh, coming November. Uh, they will all be posted there. I hope you can go to the site and look at all the fabulous things that will be offered. And I hope one of these veins will interest you and uh, perhaps uh, contact me for any information that you have. It will all be available on the Ruby Lane platform at Barnstar for the fall antiques at Rhinebeck. We're so excited to have a platform because so many of us dealers feel so bad about missing the fall show at Rhinebeck 
and not being able to have in-person shows, but please realize that we will give you as much information as possible and you'll be able to see wonderful, wonderful photographs and pictures of any of the items that you're interested in. Thanks for looking, folks. Well, Nancy, I just want to say uh, you're a wealth of knowledge huh. about weather vanes and antiques in general. And I know also that you guarantee everything that you sell. Yes, and, yes. And to be authentic and it. of the period that they're from, yes. And that is so important to make sure that you, you, you deal with a reputable person, as Nancy says, that somebody that will stand by their items and stand by the condition of them, not just the age. Because on a weather vane, just a, a replaced tail can take away 50% of the value. And on, on literally one of the years affects the value a great deal. And there are very good people today that fake the, the, the ears, every part of it, right? And they, they're so good, right, Nancy? Yes, it does take a discerning eye, but after you've dealt with them for a few years, it's quite easy to tell. Right, and if you buy from some, some, somebody like Nancy, you know that they're right. You can sleep at night, and that's the important thing. You can sleep at, light, at night knowing that you've bought a genuine antique, a great piece of folk art. And another wonderful thing about weather vanes too, which is uh, economically, they really have held their value. You know, weather, they have. you know, so many things it's in the market are going up and down, but true. for but for many many years, people have always loved weather vanes, and uh, they're always part of their great folk art collection. It's really true. They go with modern art. Mm -hmm. They go with they go with all different. Oh, I think they look wonderful in contemporary settings. Yes. And they, you know, they look great on a high boy, and they look great on you know uh, uh, you uh, know uh, 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 credenza that's mid century modern. They right. would look great there too. No, it's it's really true. Really true. I mean, these are wonderful. Really great, great, great. Wow. Maybe a day. Well, thanks so much, Lee. It was, a, it was a thrill to share them with you. Nancy, thanks for bringing them. <laughs> it's nice to talk about them with somebody as knowledge knowledgeable as you. So, Nancy, you brought two things that I absolutely love. Uh, sailor's Valentines and salt glazed decorated stoneware. I love these items, too. Uh, I think the Sailor's Valentines are so interesting. Um, they have such an interesting history about them. So many people have always said to me, oh, the sailors made them on the boats. And uh, right. Diane Battelle, who's a real expert on these, wrote a wonderful book on Sailor's Valentines. I read and it. she explained the history of them so well that they were actually made in Barbados. When the great sailing ships would make their voyage around, they always put in for a nice long stay in the Barbados area. And when the boats were in and all the sailors came off, yeah. uh, they always wanted to shop and buy things even back in the 1850s. Yeah. And several of the ladies who lived on Barbados started this cottage industry of making these delightful sailors' valentines. And the sailors would purchase them and bring them back to their sweethearts or their wives. Some of them have wonderful little sayings on them that'll say, remember me or to my darling. That's, and uh, they were given I don't know it's always Valentine's, but they were just given as pieces of endearments. Lee, look at all the wonderful little shells. This one has a heart and a compass and a rose. Fabulous. And this they, one over here has the, uh, the, the star compass on it and right. a sweet little heart with a rose on it. The shells are very unusual, too. Wonderful. And they're, they, they, it seems like there's a certain shell, they say, that is typical of Barbados. Is it this type of here, the um, conical shell, the little, the the little small one? The little there. tiny, almost like a tiny little yeah. conch shell, yes. I, I, uh, that's, I, I think it's, I, I, it's a wonderful story that it lasted for years. The sailors made them when they had their spare time. But, I, but the real story is that they were made on the Barbados Islands, right? And, and, and what a what a great story. I, I understand that some go back to the late 18th century. There were a few, and they, and they just found one dated 1828. I mean, that early. But these are dated these are around... 1850 eight, to 1880, I 80, would say, you know, it, uh, still a, during the sailing times is, when uh, the sailing uh, ships were still going out. Right. Uh, the cases are always in octagons. Yes. Um, I do believe most of the glass is original to them. Once in a while the glass yep. is replaced, but this glass looks fairly old. I love the little blue shells too. There's some darling little blue shells oh, that I think are very yeah. typical of the Barbados area as oh, well. Down here? Yes, right oh, through yes, here. Lovely. The little tiny blue shells, they're which such, you don't usually see. They're such great shape because of course they, they're still shiny because there's no waves. There haven't been wave washing over them for the 
it for years. And also they, they're sealed in glass, right? Yes, that really preserves them. So and they come in different sizes too. Right. I've seen really large ones and little tiny ones. Right, right. Uh, and I they're all charming. And I think in Victorian times, they truly loved these because they were such a novelty to bring home and people yeah. loved to look at them on their pat, you know, yes. on their tables. They were out with shell collections and butterfly collections and that sort of thing as well. Are these being sold together or apart? Separately. They're being sold separately, okay. and you'll find them on the Ruby Lane site uh, okay. during our upcoming Barnstar uh, Fall Rhineback show. Yeah, and uh, yep. they're just delightful, a wonderful little gift, and they'll bring anyone who owns them many years of joy. They're really, really great. What about the jug? Well, I love stoneware. I know you love stoneware, Lee. <laughs> and I brought this particular one. I thought you might find it kind of interesting because it's oval form, which is the earlier form right. that you're going to find in stoneware. Uh, usually between 1820 and about 1850 is when the oval form was mostly done. This ov uh, ovoid, right shape, this S shape, right? Go ahead. And yes. you can feel the potter's hands as it came up. Yes. It's and an applied handle. Yeah, the applied handle with Albany uh, slip on, that's brown on the inside, right? The mm -hmm. dark Albany slip. And this is, what's rare about this is the ochre. This yes, ochre I color. never seen, the, you'll saw, 90% of the stoneware that you'll see with yeah. decoration will have that beautiful deep cobalt decoration. Right. But every now and then you'll find one that they did in the ochre decoration. Yes. And I think this was actually done by Julius Norton's hand yep. because of the very fine way that brush came around. You can just it's, see the detail in the little flower. Hour. Absolutely fabulous! It's it's wonderful. I'm, it's his, I, I think you're absolutely right about that. I saw one once with a butterfly on it. He was and, and it has the same feeling. These wings are almost like those butterflies' wings. It's this is just it's like a little painting. A little painting, yeah. And and in perfect condition too, right? No cracks. No, no it's cracks. in really nice just, shape. Just, this is from the kiln, this natural, Yes, you sometimes know. you'll find little spots on them that right. the salt glaze would make on the particular right. pieces. I love the way you can see how this handle was handmade and yes. pushed in right there with his with, thumb to with, hand apply it. Right, before uh, J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI came along, but there's usually a thumbprint right there. <laughs> and there is, you can see a thumbprint. <laughs> and uh, how, how much more personal can you get than that? that makers, right. You know, but uh, wow, reasonable. Very nice. Well, thanks for looking at it, Lee, and yeah. thanks for seeing my things today. Thanks it was so much fun bringing them, and I hope everyone will go to the Ruby Lane site. There's going to be many wonderful things on that. It was just such a pleasure meeting you and talking with my things thanks. to you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you.